Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So you saw in my last video, I was refurbing my IS300 dash, the one from the 2001 version that's non-melting. And I did all the refinishing. The only thing is when I originally got this dash, one of the vents or actually both the vents on the side uh, were busted up. They had one of the up and down little thingies inside was broken. And I figured I was gonna use my one off my old dash, but I figured that one's probably brittle and it's gonna break on me too. So today I decided to go ahead and try to 3D print the replacement part and see if I could fix that old vent or the vent that came with this dash and see how that works. So stay tuned. So you guys can see here, these are two side vents that came off the dash. And on the side here, you can see all the mechanism. This little connecting rod basically broke on both sides of them. This one's completely all gone. So all these things kind of just flap independent now instead of together with that whole rod right there that keeps them all together. So what I'm gonna end up doing today is I'm gonna go ahead and draw this up in AutoCAD and then see how well this all works and fits once I get there. So I already measured everything using the caliper over here and I think the distance over here is about 50 or 51 millimeters, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the length like that. It's actually, I'm gonna go just round that up to five millimeters. And then the holes are about 11 millimeters on center. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that up in AutoCAD and try to extrude it into a 3D model. Once I extrude it to the 3D model, I can export it to the actual 3D printer file and we can print it on the printer. So here's what I drew up in AutoCAD 2020. Uh, basically the holes are all 11 millimeters on center. I think the diameter of this was two and a half uh, on the actual hole diameter. And I just made the five holes right there. I put this little bump here to kind of match the one that's on there. It's more for strength than anything else to put that little bump there. I don't know on a 3D print how well that's gonna work, but we'll go ahead and try that out and then print this out and see how it looks. So over here in AutoCAD, this is just regular AutoCAD 2D, but AutoCAD has an actual option down here where you can actually do 3D modeling. And in there, you use the press pull uh, program up here to kind of pull the solid out from the circle. And if you go to an ISO view on this, you can see that the actual holes are actually pulled out. And then we're gonna go into the solid view and you can see on the solid view, it's solid. And if I go on top view of that, you can see the hole in the center. So that th means this thing is a 3D with a hole in it, which is what we need. So since it's black, it's kind of hard to see the holes at this angle. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and export this out and see how it does. The, the beauty of AutoCAD is for this file, you can just go ahead up here, export, and then export other formats. And then you just select the type of file you want, which is the STL file. So this is my first attempt right here. That was what I modeled and I ended up printing it out on the 3D printer. It's really my kid's a toy box 3D printer, but it takes regular STL files and you can just print anything you want as long as it's pretty small. So this is what I have. I went ahead and tried to fit it into here, but it looks like my holes are just a little bit too small to fit snugly in there. And I discovered that this top hole on here is actually bigger. So I actually have to make that hole bigger on here on the model. So I'll go ahead and go back into AutoCAD, adjust this out and then export it. And then we'll go see if that print works on that second try. All right, so we're, I'm back in AutoCAD now. And it looks like right now these circles are at two and a half diameter. I'm gonna increase it to 2.6 just to make it fit a little bit better because once it goes into the 3D printer, it actually makes it a tad bit smaller. So we'll go ahead and increase them all up to a 2.6 diameter. And this is in millimeters. For that one end one, I'm gonna go ahead and just up that one to 3.6 because it was actually one millimeter more. So I might do like 3.65 on that one just to kind of fit it into there. Since that thing is actually getting actually bigger, I'm gonna make the surround just a little bit bigger just to reinforce it so it doesn't break. So what I'm gonna do is just put a kind of circle or whatever and just put a bump on either side just to put more material there. So we'll go ahead and do that and then I'll extrude it out and then export it. 
So on that end piece, like I said, I made it bigger and I made that circle on the outside with more material. So now I have all these little pieces right here. I just gotta go ahead and just join them all in one solid by hitting the join command. So now it's all one piece. If I go ahead and look at this in the ISO view, I can do that right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the 3D modeling toolbar. Once I'm in here, I'll go ahead and do the press pull command. Hit the area here I wanna extrude to, and then I wanna extrude it to a 2.3. So now we're at 2.3 thickness. And if we view it as a, see, a, not a wireframe, but the solid, we do that. And then we can do the top view. We have the holes there, so go ahead and export this out and then we'll go ahead and import it into the toy box program and then extrude it on the 3d printer so my brother-in-law bought this for my kids it's a little toy box 3d printer that makes little gadgets and toys it's a very simple easy to use basic 3d printer that the kids love but it's perfect for my little car part so we'll go ahead and import that file and send it to this machine. So this program and this 3D printer is very basic. Everything's Wi-Fi. So as long as this thing's on the same network as your Wi-Fi, you can use your app on your phone or a PC computer, log into it and send it files. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go ahead and just import. And it's pretty easy. You just kind of import an STL file or any other compatible file for this printer. And this is VentBar 2, that's right there. It just brings it in and it shows it right there on the actual bed. Everything looks good. Go ahead and just create that one. Call it vent bar two as my second try. And then we'll go ahead and just hit print me. And it just sends it automatically down to the printer. And once the printer warms up and everything gets downloaded, it's gonna start the print. All right, so here's the second try at it. It looks like it's pretty good. The holes are a little bit better. We'll go ahead and go down the garage and see how well this fits in there. So the holes are a little bit too tight. I might have to open them up a little bit on the next model. But for this particular one, I might just go ahead and take a drill and see if I can open the holes just a tad bit so it could slip into these actual pegs and then see if it fits well. All right, I went ahead and opened it up a little bit and it looks like it slips in now, so we'll go ahead and try to put this all in and see how well it actually operates. Okay, snap this side in first. Oh, fuck. Oh, this whole thing is actually brittle too, damn it. So I just ended up breaking that piece. That's freaking waste of time. You kinda gotta hold these things. Not too much pressure on them. Yeah, what a waste. So that thing broke too, so. Even though the first one broke, the other one snapped in pretty good, so they still actually work. So what I can actually do is, if I really needed to, I could just glue this last one in one solid spot, and then just have the other three actually move, the other four can actually still move, and that will probably work better than just not having anything at all. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on this quick video on doing the 3D part to try to fix this vent. Obviously, we had a little bit of a snafu with that one last fin, but having the other four connected with that new piece will be a good viable backup vent if I ever needed this for any reason. That last piece doesn't really do much anyways. You could probably just leave that and then flip it up and down whenever you need to, to use that piece, but the other four still work now with that new part. And now I've kind of figured it out and I can create these little tiny parts using that 3D printer anytime I break something or need to fix something on this car. So anyways, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, stay on top of all my different DIY videos on the IS300, the IS250, the Sienna, or whatever I'm doing around the garage. Go ahead and subscribe to your channel. Remember guys, for all these different projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.